Shri Sai Satcharita Chapter 35 In this chapter there is the story of the friend of Kaka Mahajani who worshiped God in the nirguna form and was averse to idol worship once out of curiosity he accompanied Kaka to Shirdi upon entering the dwarkamai baba said why have you come please his friend was stunned as this was exactly how his late father spoke the tone of voice the construction of the sentence was the same the friend forgetting his resolve rushed and placed his head on baba's feet and also gave dakshina to him then baba said pull down the wall of the teli the wall of separateness between you and me the way then will be open for us to meet each other the next leela is very interesting as there are many lessons to be learned from it dharam se jeta pai takkar a solicitor from mumbai was a skeptic once he accompanied kaka mahajani to shirdi just to test baba along the way mahajani bought some grapes as an offering to baba and then they went for baba's darshan soon the grapes were distributed and takkar also received some takkar received the grapes but was hesitant to eat them as he did not relish the seeded variety and he knew not what to do with the seeds soon thereafter baba again gave him grapes and asked him to eat them however this time they were seedless whilst the rest of them received the seeded variety thus he was convinced of baba's divinity he also wished that mahajani return home with him and baba granted his wish prior to leaving mumbai he had decided not to offer any dakshina but as mahajani offered baba dakshina he also desired to do the same after doing so he requested permission to return home and baba granted it then baba says there was once a fickle minded wealthy man who was physically and mentally in good health but he was restless and worried for no apparent reason seeing his plight i said you wander restlessly steady your mind and fix it on one thing whatever that may be and live contentedly the saint was surprised as this was his very own story then baba continued he who gives me 1 rupee as dakshina to him will i have to give 10 times more and this fakir will only ask of him to whom he is indebted wealth is beneficial only if it is spent in dharma and charity and not on sensual pleasure for ethical conduct and charity alone gives you pure knowledge what you sow you reap you never receive unless you give then with baba's blessings they all returned to mumbai and the saint was convinced of baba's divinity the next two leelas are about the wonderful effects of udi akais prabhu dreaded to go to bed as he got nightmares daily his late father appeared in his dreams and scolded him every night then another devotee gave him some udi and advised him to apply it to his forehead and keep a packet underneath his pillow the gentleman did as he was advised 
and was relieved of his insomnia due to the nightmares. And lastly, there is the story of Balaji Patil Nivasikar and his incredible faith in Baba and the selfless service he rendered for his Sadhguru. Once his family was performing his Shraad ceremony and twice the number of anticipated guests turned up. His wife was in despair and told her mother-in-law about it. Her mother-in-law consoled her saying, Don't worry, the food is Baba's. Just put a little udi in each and every vessel. Cover all the vessels with a cloth and serve everyone from it. At the end of the meal, everyone was fed to the heart's content and food was left over. Unfortunately, not much information is available about this incredible devotee. Nevertheless, I will narrate the tribute that Radha Krishna Mai gave to him. Mai says, When I first came to Shirdi, Nivasikar, a zealous devotee of Baba, swept and cleaned the path that Baba took to Lendibag. Diligently, Nivasikar woke up every morning at the crack of dawn and swept and cleaned the area in front of the Chaudi, the Dwarkamai, and the route that Baba took to Lendibag. The villagers used to throw their garbage along the side of the street and they and their families used the roadside as their toilets. Nivasikar performed this job meekly and cheerfully. Indeed, he had reached that blissful stage of devotion where I, me and mine did not exist and he saw and perceived Baba in each and everything. Gradually, I started helping him and soon took over this jaw from him and after Nivasikar passed away, I contentedly did the job, no matter how much excreta or garbage was thrown here and there. Nivasikar was a true devotee and his life was a model for all of us to learn from and emulate in our lives. Nivasikar was an affluent farmer and his wife and children resided on their farm. Every year after the harvest, Nivasikar brought the entire yield to the Dwarkamai and placed it before Baba. Whatever Baba gave him, he and his family survived on that. As far as clothing was concerned, he asked Baba and followed his advice. Once, he left his family and came to reside in Shirdi. Baba, however, asked him to return home, and he did. Later, he gave up having his meals and eating food. So, Baba prevented this by sending him his bakri, which he ate as it was Baba's prasad. He only drank the holy water that Baba's feet were washed with and the water that flowed from Baba's body while he had a bath. Nivasikar passed away peacefully and the 13th verse of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, is a verse that befits him. It means, he who leaves the body and departs, uttering the one-lettered Brahma, Om, and remembering me in my absolute aspect, reaches the supreme goal. Just as it was described in this verse, he left his human body and reached the feet of his Sadguru. Blessed is the soul. Nivasikar used to offer his harvest of wheat to Baba and live on whatever Baba gave him. His descendants carried on this ritual after his death. However, at some period of time, this practice was discontinued 
So the sun stan took over the ritual of offering a sack of wheat to Baba. This is done annually on Ram Navami and so the tradition lives on. Leela number 1 Baba's grace is with the Purandari family. Purandari once visited Shirdi. He stayed with Bala Shimpi at that time. Baba told him that he would come to dine with him along with two fakirs. With great joy, Purandare asked Baba what he should prepare. Make rice, shira, bhaji, two vegetable curries and masala khichdi, said Baba. After the noon aarti was over, upon his returning home, he saw that everything was ready. Then four or five fakirs came and they had their meals. While leaving, they informed him that many more would arrive. Later, a batch of twenty fakirs alive, satiated, they too left. Then another ten fakirs came. They too were fed to their heart's content and still food remained. Then Purandare went to Baba with betel nut leaf and dakshina and invited him for meals. Baba smiled and said, I have eaten a lot and I am satiated and satisfied. Then Baba asked Purandare to have his meals along with Bala Shimpi. All of them, Purandare's family, and Bala dined together, and still food was abundant. Purandare partook of the food as Baba's prasad. He also carried the food to Mumbai and distributed it to his friends and relatives and told everyone this wonderful Leela. This Leela is taken from Ambrosia in Shirdi written by Ramalinga Swami. The next two Leelas are about skeptics. Leela number 1 He set a test for Baba and Baba obliged. Virindra P. Pandya ordered no sadhu, fakir or beggar should be allowed inside the compound of my house or be allowed to loiter in the vicinity. Pandey worked as a business contractor in the Mumbai water supply scheme in Vaitran near Kalyan. At that time, Vaitran was a densely forested area and many sadhus and fakirs duped and looted his staff members there. Beside. Pandey was a skeptic and a doubting Thomas, hence the strict warning. He also had a huge amount of money in his residence, which was for the daily wages that he had to pay the labourers. Pandey was well educated and did not believe in saints and was a hardcore atheist. Many years ago, he happened to visit Shirdi by chance with a cousin who also gifted him with a picture of Baba that he put away in a trunk in the attic of his home. A few years later, his family residing in Bihar had to face a great deal of difficulties and Baba solved them. Yet, he thought, it was fortunate coincidence and good luck. In fact, Baba helped him twice to overcome extremely difficult situations, yet Pandey was wavering in his faith. Pandey decided to test Baba's divinity by putting an impossible demand before him for Thursday, 6 August 1952. He stood before Baba's picture and said, Baba, tomorrow is Thursday. I want you to come to my residence 
in the form of a sadhu or a fakir for alms between 12.30 and 1.00 pm. At that time, I will put the first morsel of food in my mouth, as it is my lunch time. So, I want you to appear, not before or after that time. And lastly, I want you to bless me, not in the usual way of placing your hand on my head, but by passing it from my head to my foot, so that every part of my body is blessed. If these impossible demands are met, I will dedicate my life in your service and will never ever doubt your divinity. Early in the morning on Thursday, a friend visited Pandey and gave him a box of confectionery that Pandey placed in front of Baba's picture so he could give it to the fakir. Then, at the stroke of 12.30, he sat down for his meal and waited for the fakir, but no one appeared. Just as he was about to put the first morsel of food in his mouth, he heard and saw Baba asking for alms. He sat there in a state of shock, but his cook ran and gave Baba a coin. He wondered how the fakir had entered the compound. He invited him to have a meal. After the meal, the fakir blessed him by running a bunch of peacock feathers from his head down to his feet. This incident assured Pandey that Baba had blessed him, and he became ardently devoted to Baba. This Leela was taken from Shri Sai Leela Magazine, Volume 29, Number 4, October, November, December, 1952. Leela Number 2 How Daji Sahib Patavardhan's doubts were removed. Around 1914, Baba's fame had spread far and wide. Within Maharashtra, he had innumerable devotees, as well as some skeptics. This is a Leela of Daji Sahib Patwardhan, who was a doubting Thomas, and tells how he turned into an ardent devotee. Daji's ancestors resided in Miraj, Sangli district, and were confirmed the title of Sarkar as they had a high political standing. They were affluent and owned vast acres of agricultural land. They had a huge vada where he and his entire family lived. Daji's grandfather, Harbat Baba Patwardhan, was a saintly person, and his family was spiritual and devoted to Lord Ganesha. Daji was also utterly devoted to Lord Ganesha. Daji was a voracious reader, and he had read all the epics of the great saints of those times. However, he read them not with much devotion, but with an analytical mind, and he often wondered if the Leelas therein really did happen. At this point in time, a dear friend of his asked him to accompany him to Shirdi, as he wished to meet the great saint Sai Baba. Daji was disinclined to go, as he had heard that Baba was a Muslim fakir who had numerous Hindu devotees. These followers, according to what Daji had heard, were mostly Brahmins, and Baba had cast a magical spell on them and had drawn them towards him. He had heard that Baba stayed in a dilapidated mosque, begged arms, and had a Tulsi Vrindavan in the mosque. But what troubled him most was that people actually believed that Baba had lit lamps with water. 
So he decided to see all this for himself. Daji decided that he would test Baba and prove that he was a charlatan. In May 1914, Daji set out to Shirdi. In those days, it was not easy to reach Shirdi as it is these days. It was a very long and tedious journey. From Meerut, Daji travelled by train to Pune, where he had to catch another train, which took him to Manmad and thence to Kopargaon. Daji got off at Kopargaon and began the third leg of his journey by Tonga to Shirdi. By that time, Daji was thoroughly tired from his long, tedious journey, and his clothes were dirty. He wished he could have a bath and put on some fresh set of clothes. With this thought in mind, he exited the railway station. There was a huge well near the station, but it was very, very deep, about sixty feet deep. Daji looked into the well, and the clear, cold water was enticing. At that time, Daji was a strong young man of twenty years and an expert swimmer. Without giving much thought to it, he jumped into the well. The villagers saw this and exclaimed, "The Brahmin has jumped into the well and given up his life." Daji found that he was sinking and desperately thrashed his hands above. But the more he struggled, the deeper he sank. In desperation, he struggled to come up and take a breath, but of no avail. He now realized that he would soon lose his life as he was drowning. At that very moment, he thought of Baba and silently prayed, "Baba, I came from such a far-off place to test you, and you taught me a great lesson. Now." Without meeting you, you are sending me to heaven. I have recently got married, and I don't even have children yet. My wife will become a young widow. At least consider that and save my life. If you save my life, I will worship you with devotion for the rest of my life. As soon as Daji said that, he found himself standing. On a ledge of a stone, which prevented him from sinking deeper. Then, taking the aid of the rim of the well, he slowly came up. The villagers gathered there, helped pull him to safety. Daji joined his hands together and thanked Baba for saving his life. Then he took a tonga and proceeded to Shirdi. As soon as Daji entered the Dwarka Mai, Baba greeted him. "Are Brahmin? At least now, do you have faith?" Daji went forward and prostrated before Baba, and clasped his feet. He became ardently devoted to Baba, and from then on, Daji considered every day that he woke up in the morning as a gift from Baba. This leela is taken from Sri Sai Sagar Magazine, Volume Three, Number Four, January to March, twenty thirteen. And this concludes the commentary on the chapter. Om Sai Ram.